Hey, this is Dawson from where you can watch, learn, and fly. Welcome back to another episode of Journey to A License. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about planning your skydive. If you're new here, we'd love for you to join the team by subscribing to the channel. And if you enjoy these videos, let us know by smashing that like button. So welcome to the Gear Town. Now considering we're gonna be using this to skydive, we need to make sure that it's working properly. So the main theme of this season is Journey to A License. And our goal with these episodes is obviously to help you guys understand the different concepts related to getting that A License. And one of the most important pieces to doing that is planning each of your skydives so that you're ticking off the check boxes to get your A license. In this episode, we're gonna give you our 10 step plan to plan your skydive. And the first step in that is deciding what the goal of the skydive is. Here, we're gonna decide what we're gonna do on our next jump. Now, the best way to do that is to take a look at the requirements for your A license and compare that to what you've already done in your logbook and see what you have left to do. You can find these requirements around the job zone. Odds are there's gonna be a post with all those requirements. You can look them up online, or if you're working with a coach, they're gonna help you decide what you need to do in order to get your A license. So a quick tip, when you're doing your 10 steps of a jump plan, it's a good idea to grab a piece of paper or grab your phone so you can actually write these steps down. Not only is it gonna help you better prepare for your skydive, but once you've landed, you can actually come back and reference this to see if you accomplished everything you wanted to. So step two is to decide who's gonna be on the jump. Now, in the beginning of our career, we're gonna be jumping by ourselves or with a coach who can evaluate us to make sure that we've successfully fulfilled the requirements of the A license. Once we've decided the goal of the skydive, all we need to do is just see if we need a coach or we're gonna be jumping alone. So step three is to determine the type of exit that we're gonna do. Now, the exits are a very important piece of a skydive, especially when there's more than one person. Because here, we wanna make sure that we stay nice and close together on the exit, or else we're gonna have lots of separation, which means it's gonna take us a lot more time to get back together before we can start performing the maneuvers that we had intended on the actual jump. When we talk about exits, there are three different kinds of exits that we're gonna to wanna to work on to get our A license. That's the diving exit, the poised exit or floating exit, and our unstable exit, which means that we wanna exit unstable and then recover back to a nice neutral belly position. So step four is to determine what maneuvers we're gonna perform during free fall. Now, in this step, it's very important not to overfill our skydive. We want to make sure that we only take one or two maneuvers that we can practice throughout the skydive so that we have time to check our altitude, breathe, and perform each maneuver slowly. So step five is to determine our proper breakoff altitude. Now, if we're jumping by ourselves, this step isn't really going to apply. But when we jump with other people, this is a very important step. The breakoff altitude is the altitude at which we want to separate from everybody else on the jump so that we give ourselves enough time to clear airspace. Basically what that means is that you wanna get as far away from everybody as you can so that when you open your parachute, nobody's close to you. So step six is to determine our deployment altitude. Now, all governing bodies of skydiving have a minimum activation altitude, which means that this is the lowest you're allowed to open your parachute. But not all jumpers wanna open at that altitude. Sometimes we want to open up a little bit higher, which might give us more time to play under canopy or do canopy exercises. So in this step, you're just going to determine how high you want to open and make sure that you open your parachute by that altitude. Step number seven is to go through our post-deployment checklist. Now, this isn't going to change from jump to jump. It's going to be the same checklist every time, but it's an important piece of the skydive. So we want to include it in our jump plan because we're going to have to go through it while we're actually jumping. So the first thing, we wanna do our canopy control exercises to make sure that we have a nice flyable canopy with no malfunctions. Then we wanna go through our orientation. So once we've opened up, we need to find out where we are and where the drop zone is, and that's gonna help us determine if we can make it back or we have to land off. Then our last piece is we need to do our last emergency procedures check. Because remember that once we've opened up the canopy, our handles are gonna be a little bit different than where they were on the ground. So we need to make sure that we just identify those quickly before we move on to doing our canopy exercises. Step number eight. Determine what canopy exercises we're gonna perform. Once we've opened up our canopy, there's still a whole other discipline to the skydive that we get to practice, and it's flying our parachute. Under the requirements for the A license, there are a whole bunch of different exercises that you're required to perform. But just like the free fall, we don't wanna overcrowd this section of the jump. 
we wanna take one or two exercises that we can perform a couple of times, and that way, we're gonna give ourselves enough time and altitude to get back to the drop zone so that we can start our pattern at the right height. Step number nine, determining your landing pattern and your potential outs. Now, in this step, you're not gonna have as much control because the landing pattern is most likely already gonna be set for the day based off of the current wind conditions. But it is in your best interest to go out and see what the landing pattern is and then write down the landing pattern on your jump plan so that you know where your entry point is, where your crosswind leg is, and where your final leg is, and finally where you wanna land. This is gonna help make your landing that much better once you're actually on the skydive. Next, you also wanna go through the potential outs. Once you've opened up your parachute, if you realize that you're not gonna be able to make it back, writing a list of the different places that you could land safely is gonna help you out in that situation. Step 10, highlight the key area of the jump. In this step, we wanna go through our jump plan and determine what are the key highlights of our jump that we really need to focus on. So if you go back to your goal that we set in step one, if you're gonna do something that's required in your A license or that you're gonna have a coach observe you on, we know that that's an important piece of the jump and we wanna make sure that we pay special attention to that section. So for instance, if you're gonna do the maneuver series required for your A license, you know that that's a key point that you wanna make sure that you're practicing properly before you get up there. If you're doing an exercise under canopy that a coach is gonna watch and potentially sign off, you know that that's a key step that you need to focus on when you're practicing. Or if you're doing a landing pattern and you wanna make sure that you're landing within a certain target, that's gonna be a key area to focus on, so you wanna make sure that you're practicing that part and really getting that down uh, before you go on your skydive. And that's a wrap for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this episode. So I just got finished planning my next skydive here, and it got me thinking, what steps are you guys leaving out when you plan your jumps? Let us know in the comments down below, and we'll see you in the next episode. Boost guys.